Then the next short question that I got was from Mechlatsi. And Mechlatsi says, um, wants to know about the mechanisms of reproduction, re reproductive isolation and what it is all about. Okay, so let's do this. It's, it's actually very easy. Mechanisms of reproductive isolation. Okay, now, when we have a species, I mean a population, and that population clearly will belong to the same species, um, but that population is now split, either by water or by a geographical barrier of like a mountain, water, whatever. They are separated. Um, and you've got all the impacts that happen to each, or the natural selection, environmental pressure that happens to each of those, of the two populations now, because the one became two. And they end up forming two different species. All right, that's called speciation. Now, when we put those two species back together again, they do not reproduce. Okay, they will not reproduce and there will not be a gene flow between them. Okay, why? That is what these mechanisms of reproductive isolation is all about. Okay, it's when we have two species that are different. So the first thing we have is, I'm going to, let's go through it alphabetically, is your behavioral isolation. Okay, and with behavioral isolation, that would be um, animals have a certain courtship behavior. Okay, um, it, it, it's called... Uh, Species-specific courtship rituals or species-specific courtship behavior. So the male does his little thing, and then if the female likes what he's doing, his behavior, she then accepts him and he mates with her. She allows him to mate with her. But if that species-specific courtship ritual is different, she ignores him and she won't let him come near her. And you know what? No mating takes place. So that's your behavioral isolation. I'm just going to put in bracket here. Species specific courtship rituals or behavior. Okay. The second one is your gamete isolation. Okay, and with gamete isolation, you're going to end up with infertile offspring. Okay, so what happens here is the gametes are changed, all right? Um, and when the male and the female, if they actually get to mate, and if fertilization takes place, they end up producing offspring that are infertile. And if they infertile offspring, then the gametes are isolated and it, they will not be passed on to the next generation. An example would be um, a donkey and a horse. Um, they don't generally mate, but if they do, and if fertilization does take place, they end up producing a mule. And a mule is completely infertile. Okay, the third one uh, would be... Mechanical isolation and mechanical isolation would be things that would prevent fertilization. Okay, now what would prevent fertilization is, for example, with animals where the, the male and the female reproductive parts change. So, in other words, the penis is not designed to fit into the vagina and therefore they ca he ca the male cannot transfer the sperm into the female. All right, so therefore fertilization can't take place because the sperm has to get into the female's body and it can't. Um, in the case of, of plants, you're going to have uh, the stigma, um, which is where the little pollen grains land. The stigma releases an enzyme which stimulates the pollen grains to grow. And... Well, all the thing that happens then in plants for your mechanical isolation is the stigma is going to release an enzyme that doesn't stimulate the development of the pollen grains. And, well, they don't, the pollen grain, does, the, the tube doesn't grow down, so the gametes never, ever get to the ovules. Okay, and um, 
for, okay, so we've got behavioral iso gamete isolation, mechanical isolation, um, oh, seasonal isolation. Okay, and with seasonal isolation, it's exactly that. So what happens there is um, they breed at different times of the year. So, for example, in flowers, uh, the, the anthers, which carry the, the pollen, and the stigmas of the, um, of the flower, which leads to the ovary, so it's the top, okay, those two ripen at different times of the year, so that you can't have cross-pollination for the different species. So you're not going to have a rose being able to uh, um, cross-pollinate with a daisy because they, are, uh, um, they become fertile at different times of the year. Okay. So